in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your home thank you for watching be blessed you would go to the house of a very wealthy man and turn left and right and see everything you desire and aspire for and yet that man is still looking for something and you're asking what are you still looking for and the man will say something like I can give up all these things you see for what I am looking for and he's still frustrated remember when he made his first million remember when he made his first billion he thought it would give him that peace and satisfaction and even in the midst of plenty remember the first time the man boarded a flight coming from a background of penury and poverty he was happy and smiling now he may probably have his own private charter or his private jet and in the midst of it there is still that frustration how about those who hang and write letters with billions piled in their accounts and shoot themselves or hang themselves as painful as death is that a state can come in a man's life where it seems better to die than to live are we still together how about a young preacher on campus catching the fire praying for eight hours praying for nine hours learning about Greek and Hebrew as a new experience and my goodness this gentleman is now beginning to step into some kind of dimension of grace now they invite him for small fellowships and the power of God is moving this young man is rediscovering a whole new world about his destiny happy and excited for a while then campus days are over then he desires to start ministry another frustration comes where do I get venue where do I get money and then he starts ministry 30 years later he's angry frustrated looks back and he does not even know whether he was called or not <laughs> what are we really looking for please I want you to listen to this message the Lord put it in my heart to share for the terrorists or one who would stand and kill people and rob a bank and rob people what are they really looking for for the preacher who has a large congregation and yet continues to pray and say God give me increase what are we really looking for for the one who has successful children all graduates all successful all working and they still have prayer requests what are they looking for the one who just made his first billion in dollars and is still looking for something still submitting proposals from state to state nation to nation region to region fighting and arguing over wars fighting and arguing over um, contracts what is he looking for for the man of God who has been in the faith working with God for 40 years and he's still fasting and praying what is he looking for for one who has seen the power of God move in his life in uncommon unimaginable dimensions what is he looking for you will thank me for the message that you are hearing tonight this message will give your life meaning it will give your life perspective and indeed it will give you peace are we learning the Bible says there are four that never say enough it is not within their there is nothing they never attain any state where they can say I have had enough I've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful people and successful systems I didn't want to be a failure myself I hate failure hallelujah 
And I knew that for you to succeed in life, you would need knowledge and indeed a lot of it. And so I submitted myself to learning. I still do. And I'm humbled by the things that I've learned through the years from books, from men, from materials, and even from my own experiences. I used to think that the greatest tragedy in life was failure. That the worst that can happen to a man in life is that that man fails, fails to achieve his or her dreams. But I would soon discover that there is another tragedy that is greater than failure. And it's not death. This discussion is not about those who are dead. This discussion is about those who are alive. What is worse than failure? I will tell you. There is one thing that is worse than failure. It's called success without fulfillment. That success without fulfillment would bring a greater sting, a greater frustration than even failure. It is possible for a man to be successful and never be fulfilled. In my studies and my learning about God and learning about systems, learning about principles of posterity, principles of um, stability in the lives of people and in organizations, I have found out that the subject of fulfillment is one that many people have downplayed to their detriment. There are many, many, many people today who are victims of the absence of fulfillment, even though successful. The greater tragedy, greater than failure, is a life of success that does not have fulfillment. In Genesis chapter 37, when you read from verse 15, the Bible talks about Joseph. I just want to borrow a concept there, and then I'll begin my teaching. That Joseph was sent to go and look for his brothers. And the Bible says, and a certain man found him, the him being Joseph now. And behold, the Bible says, he was wandering in the field. Wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, what seekest thou? He saw him wandering. Who is this young man? Very visionary. But you are wandering in frustration. It seems to me your body language and your action suggests to me that you are looking for something. I see your determination. I see your press. It seems you're going back and forth. You're waking up in the morning. I see you're going to have a master's. You're going to have a PhD. I see you're attending conferences and trainings. They suggest to me that whilst you are wandering around, there is something you are looking for. The question is what seekest thou? What are you looking for? That has made you travel to U.S. for trainings. Travel to Canada for trainings. That even in old age, you are not ashamed to go back to school again. What seekest thou? What is that that you are looking for? That makes you to hate and detest failure so much. Books upon books. You have a library that is full of them. And anything that looks like useful information, you are like a sponge absorbing anything that seems to propose a greater life. Please keep that scripture there. 37, 15. A certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him a simple question. What seekest? As simple as this question is, ladies and gentlemen, you can spend your entire life trying to search for the answer. You would think you have found the answer, and 10 years added to your life, you would discover what you found was not really the answer. Many people have gone to their graves unable to answer this question. What are you looking for? 
What is that which motivates you? Why are you doing the things that you are doing? There are people who retire, respectfully speaking, from service. And they cry and beg and say, retain me again. Even though the company and the organization is saying, you've tried, you've served for 30, 35 years. Go and rest. They say, no, I don't want to rest. What seekers thou? When a patient runs around looking for a doctor, traveling from nation to nation, what seekest thou? Write this down, please. Understanding the subject of fulfillment, understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth. Understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth. Hallelujah. I took out time to learn the subject of fulfillment because I do not want to live a useless life. In as much as you love me, in as much as you believe that I am a man of God, sent from God, in as much as you have been blessed by the privilege of the investment of grace upon my life, do you know it is possible to live a life impacting people whilst you are frustrated? Do you agree with me on that? There have been many people on earth, in the secular and even in church, who kill themselves in the presence of overwhelming impact. Traveling from pillar to post, Blessing people. While everybody is calling you a blessing, you are dying in total frustration. In fact, I will tell you this. Psychologists will tell you that some of the people who are perceived to be the most successful people are about the most frustrated people. They live lonely lives. They are on drugs. They have to live off therapy after therapy. And you are surprised. You go to their offices and you see awards. Day and night. And yet those people can wake up one morning and literally die of frustration. It means there is something that if we do not understand, we stand a risk of living a life that is extremely successful. But and in the midst of our success, we find out that we live defeated lives that do not count as far as fulfillment is concerned. For someone shout no way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've met very old people. I like to see elderly people, especially those who have done something notable. I believe they have profound wisdom and I can learn from them. And I will tell you the truth. A number of them, even in old age, in the course of our discussion, have been very open to tell me, Apostle, I did this, I, that, I did that, I traveled here, I traveled there, some of them preachers, some of them business people, and they would tell me that there was still a longing in their hearts, that they felt like they did not do enough. What is fulfillment? Please write this down. I define fulfillment as the satisfaction please write it i define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively the fulfillment the satisfaction and the joy you may want to add the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. Fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. It's called fulfillment. Now, I want you to tighten your seatbelt and sit quietly as I teach you something that I truly believe 
will revolutionize your life. I have taught a bit on it here, um, but then I want to teach this in detail. It was a miracle and it was a deliverance to my own life from living a life that was futile, filled with only success without fulfillment. I want to live a life that is both successful and a life that is fulfilled by every standard. Are you ready? Now, there are six fundamental human needs. Write it down, please. There are six fundamental human cravings. There are more than needs. There are desperate cravings that every man, provided you are alive, it is the craving that defines the motivation that drives everything that you do in your life. Whether from a spiritual context, whether from an economic context, whether from a sociological context, all of us as the human species are driven essentially by these six needs, but believe me, they are more than needs. They are cravings that literally your sense of fulfillment from a human standpoint depends on your having these cravings satisfied. That if at any point in your life, these cravings are not met and represented in your life, it will only spell utter frustration. No matter what line of work or career, whether you are a preacher, an apostle, a prophet, a businessman, an academician, a family man, young, old, male, female, educated, uneducated, black, white, it does not matter. This is a reality that is common to us all. Six fundamental human cravings, human needs. Are you ready? Please write them down. Number one, the need for security. Please write it down. Every human born of a woman has this craving from within them. The need to feel secured, physically secured, emotionally secured. Now, these needs vary based on gender, based on age, based on levels of exposure, but ultimately, all of us have the same need. It is just the various degrees of these needs that now define what we call our personality. Security. Men will give up anything to feel secured, even if they are not secured. Sadly and unfortunately, we've had several things happen across Kaduna. For those of you who are in Nigeria here, the mayhem that was unleashed on people, it's unfortunate, it's been quite a tragic two weeks, especially for that region. And you can imagine, so everyone within that region would crave for security. And the moment you see a military man wearing a uniform, you are happy to see that person. Is that true? Because that person represents security. Number two, the second human craving is the need for variety or dynamism. Please write it down. Variety or dynamism. This is the reason why anything that is new especially in the mass media cells because we like to know what is the breaking news what is the new information people hate boredom it's not it's not given to the human species to endure boredom indefinitely people like things that create variety that's why people find special moments and celebrate them that's why you do not wear the same color of cloth every day, for instance. That is the reason why you, you are tired of a house that you've been living in and you will want to move to another house. It's a craving for variety. Companies based on this awareness reinvent their products, reinvent the packaging of their products, and just by reinventing the packaging of their products can rise to millions of dollars and billions of dollars simply because they satisfy this craving for variety. Same product, they don't have to change anything as far as the product is concerned, but they gave it a presentation that was new and appealing. Are we together? Number three. The third craving that is in every human being is the need for significance. Write it down, please. This is a very serious one, especially to men. Significance. 
the concept of respect as we know the concept of honor we know that is embedded in most of the masculine gender if not all came from the need for significance when you bow down and you greet me and say good afternoon sir why am i excited as you're bowing down when you kneel down and say good afternoon ma it is it gives people a perception of significance are we together now people crave for significance they crave for it more than you can ever know preachers parents young people business people men women everyone significance people crave for respect people crave for honor and people crave for acknowledgement you know what acknowledgement is to make sure you are aware of the extent of the worth of that individual and that you can attest to the fact that that individual is that valuable it's called acknowledgement people can go to any length to be acknowledged Businessmen, pastors, politicians have become arch enemies for decades simply because someone's pedigree was downplayed by not being acknowledged. Or not acknowledged properly. Are we together? If I sit on any of these beautiful seats, or I sit on the ground, or I sit on any white chair anywhere. What difference does it make in terms of um, in terms of my physical person? It may not necessarily make any difference, but it seems to communicate a sense of significance, a sense of acknowledgement, a sense of respect, a sense of honor, and you can't believe how people crave for it. In every occasion, there is something called high table. High table. It's still table. High. Now, what is the difference between those who sit there and those who sit everywhere else? They can even eat the same thing. In every flight, there's what is called first class, there's what is called business class and economy. These are various names that were invented to help manage and communicate the idea of significance. Are we together you go to certain places and say this is a priority route this is a regular route all this name vvip uh, vip you know and all of these things they are all they are all various attempts please pay attention to what i'm teaching you significance you cannot imagine the degree to which you crave for significance it's a craving that many people, it would take a lot of enlightenment to even be aware of the extent to which you need it. Number four. Are you ready for the fourth? The fourth craving, desperate craving of all humans is love and acceptance. The need to be accepted. Please underline that word acceptance. The opposite of acceptance is rejection. And go and ask any psychologist and any man of God who is serious with God, and they can tell you the, the, the severe consequences of being in a position of rejection. Are we together? Love and acceptance. Please look up. Why do you think most people join occult groups? I can tell you, go and ask most of these young people while in secondary school now, unfortunately, I don't mean called like village, called groups, the one that, you know, these guys that move around. Um, you ask them what, what they are looking for. They will tell you, I came from a family where nobody believed in me, nobody accepted me, and here is this group, and they told me if they can scar my body and do all kinds of things, I will be accepted. And they will endure such pain provided it will provide acceptance hallelujah people crave for love and people crave for acceptance people have cried because doors were shut at them they were not accepted 
people have cried because they did not give them employment it was not about the employment or lack of it but that it was communicated in a way that shows that you are rejected and they go back feeling things that have no business with that job so is this how my life is going to be hallelujah praise the name of the lord yes there are sincere men and women who come seeking counseling from psychologists seeking counseling from men and women of god and they say look i think i'm a beautiful lady i think i'm a handsome man and look at my life nobody has ever said good morning nobody has ever said good afternoon what is making them feel that bad they sense a longing for acceptance and the pain of rejection is someone learning number five what is the fifth craving of all human beings growth and increase people crave to grow people crave desperately to grow every parent wants to see their child or their children grow every child wants to grow to become an adult um, parents many of you would see children a young child who started walking and doing all kinds of things and if the mother should leave her dressing space to that child, one day the child is going to surprise her. You will come and you see the child trying to put eyelashes, trying to put all kinds of things. The child is insisting and say, I can't wait for 18 years. It's too long or 15 years or whatever. Let me make my attempt now. And the child will paint himself into all kinds of things. The need and the instinct for growth. How about teenagers? You flog them and say, be patient until you are 18 before you start driving. The same car, they will be tired and pack it one day. But they will fight once they are 17, 16. You will have to flog them, advise them, make them quote scriptures to stay in one place and wait for just one more year before they start driving. The need for growth. The need for growth. The need for growth. Especially in Africa. Most people hate being called children. When, except it's a very old man who says you're a child. But anybody who is maybe just a few years older than you, if he calls you a child, say, look, you are older than me, but don't you dare call me a child. I'm not a child. Because there is something about our passion for growth. Even children now say, don't call me a child. What are you? I'm not an adult, but I'm not a child anyway. <laughs> Everybody say growth. When someone holds a master's certificate or a PhD or another certification somewhere, why are they happy to celebrate those milestones? It gives them a perception of growth. Luke 2 and verse 20, 52. Even in fact, when you read from verse 49 to 52, Jesus himself, passionate about growth, the Bible does not leave us in the dark. He went as a teenager. The Bible says he was at the temple learning, building his mind satisfying that need and that craving for growth and the father and the mother joseph and mary went around looking for him when they found him at the temple he said unto them how is it that ye sought for me wish not that i must be about my father's business verse 50 the bible says and they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them 51 and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these things in her heart. 52, popular scripture. And Jesus increased. Say increased. In wisdom, he increased in stature physically. He increased in favor with God and with men. Everybody say growth. Growth is very powerful. I do not know anybody, no matter how critical, who does not celebrate any major milestone in his life. People celebrate birthdays. People celebrate anniversaries. Why? Because it culminates to growth. As a man of God, if you have 10 members and God brings five more, you are careful to celebrate and say, thank God for this. The concept of ingathering has come to stay in the body of Christ. Yes, because we want souls saved. But in truth, in addition to that, it is the, the instinct for growth. Everything that is alive grows. 
Now, not to get you offended, there are children who have medical conditions that impede their growth in one area or the other or their overall stature. You find out that you can see a child who is three years old, four years old, and then maybe because of some deformity or some you know, health issue, the child cannot grow properly. It is a concern to any responsible parent. Is that true? How many of you have seen children, again, respectfully, who um, maybe they had to repeat certain classes, maybe primary one, primary two, and the child is there for three years, four years, and you find out that people come and say, what kind of a child are you? You will now say, your colleagues are in primary five or something, and you are still here. And the child feels bad because the child wants to increase. The child wants to grow. So number one, security. Number two, variety and or dynamism. Number three, significance, acknowledgement. Number four, love and acceptance. Number five, growth and increase. Are you ready for the last? Number six, impact and contribution. The sixth craving in all humans, regardless who, is the craving to know that your life is counting, that you are living an impactful life and you are contributing towards a cause. Let me tell you this. This sixth craving is so serious. This is one of the root causes of um, violence that is accelerated in many underdeveloped nations because most young people are they want to be part of a cause part of something and because they are idle there's nothing the moment they see that there is something that catches the attention of media everybody wants to be part of it whether it is election whether it is whatever it is they want to be part of anything happening that there is that that dopamine feeling of relevance that feeling of knowing that i'm doing something my life is counting for something Hallelujah. There is nobody who does not want his life to count. I can tell you this. In all of the messages and all of this that people send, the most touching for me is, Apostle, thank you. I listened to your teaching. It changed my life. Now I love the Lord more. Now I'm passionate uh, about the things of the kingdom or your teaching has brought me knowledge. You know why it gives me joy? Yes, Jesus is glorified, but it gives me joy because I can, through that text message, it can give me a basis to say, thank God my life is counting. There is nobody who wants to live as a non-entity to know that your life is not counting. How many people have resigned from jobs because they felt that they were being underutilized? They felt there's nothing I'm doing here. I think I'm worth more in terms of impact than this. It's not about the salary. I'm not doing anything. I just sit down and sign documents. Whether I come to work or not, my salary is there. I don't think I am productive, they say. But what is really driving them is the fact that they want their lives to count. When we acknowledge people, we begin to list some of the things they have done that has blessed us. So, 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 and so, man, he has blessed me. He's changed my life as a businessman. He's mentored me as a lecturer, as a man of God. And you see the people rejoice and give glory to God, but then you can see that fulfillment because their lives count. Now, I will tell you why I listed all of these things. All that we seek for, all that we look for, all that we work for, all that we pray for is hidden in these six things. Believe me when I tell you, every single one prayer request written here during the miracle service, every single desire that brought you to the house of God, no matter how you want to twist it spiritual, from a psychological standpoint is an attempt to draw into your life one of these six cravings. Let me repeat myself. All that we seek for, all that we look for, all that we fight for, all that we work for, and all that we pray for is hidden 
in these six psychological needs. This is very powerful. Write this down, please. Nothing physical. This is a sad news, but it's also a deliverance for someone now. Nothing physical or material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. Nothing physical or material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. What a deliverance, what a deliverance, what a deliverance. That nothing physical or nothing material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. Back to my illustration when I started teaching. Remember the young boy? Remember the married man? Remember the career person? Remember the old man? No wonder, in spite of their various levels of achievements, one thing that still remains in their life is the need for fulfillment. As a young boy, as a student, as a graduate, as a married man, as a father, as a grandfather, as a career person, as an expert, as a poor person, as a millionaire, as a billionaire, as an enlightened person, as a successful man of God. The same thread runs through all of these people, a craving that many do not understand. So, watch this. We invented various ways of trying to fulfill this craving. I can tell you that is the principal cause of frustration in today's world. Is God speaking to someone? The principal cause of frustration. Many people live lives that are frustrated today. And you will ask them what they are looking for. And they cannot really articulate what is driving them. What are they looking for? They think they are looking for a car. They think they are looking for a house or a bigger house. They think they are looking for a husband or a wife. They think they are looking for twins or triplets. Please listen very carefully. Believe me when I tell you nothing physical and nothing material has been authorized by God to give anybody fulfillment. None of it has the power to give you fulfillment. Wow. Not your certificate. Not your marriage. Not your children. Not the cars you buy. Not the titles. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these things are not useful. But I'm interpreting for you the thing you are really looking for. You think it is a car that you are looking for. I'm giving you an advance notice. You will find that car and only rejoice for a very short time. That's why we enjoy things that are new. And then they stop giving us fulfillment. Remember when you bought the SUV? You smiled and gave God glory, danced around it and snapped it. It's in your house, but you wanted it to be within your sight. Four months later on, it's not fixed and you don't care. What changed? You found out that it did not have the ability. You thought it deceived you. Jesus, you're the cup that overruns life. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. This is very powerful. For who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love you, the endless one. Hallelujah. Man of God, I know you think what you are looking for is more members. You are sincere. But that is not what you are looking for. What seekest thou? My dear sister, I know you are trusting God to have children. It is your obsession and it is your prayer. Lord, if only you will give me children and take away this shame. You are sincere. But let me announce to you in advance, 
that is truly not what you are looking for. You are only looking for it because you suspect there is something in it. I'm going behind your physical desires to tell you what you are really looking for. Can I tell you, not knowing this is the reason why, respectfully speaking, many homes are broken and scattered. The man is saying, I hate you. Every time you fight anybody in your life, let me tell you what you are fighting. I don't care what is the subject matter. What you are really fighting is a violation of these things. You hate people to the degree to which they violate your agenda to having one or more of these six. So when the woman looks at the man and says, you are a stupid man, I regret marrying you. You are a devil from the pit of hell. Shift all that English. What is she saying? You have robbed me of, of an opportunity to feel secured. You have robbed me of an opportunity to feel significant. You have robbed me of an opportunity to feel accepted. You have pegged and limited growth in my life. It is a, all of our English is just a way of trying to express this cry. When a man of God is frustrated and say, Lord, anoint me. What is he saying? Lord, give me what will take away shame from my life, he's saying. Now, he thinks he just wants soul saved, and he's right. But why does he need the anointing? That he will lock up himself for 40 days. What does the anointing do to him? He knows that when the anointing is there, the sick will be healed. Oppressed people will be delivered. And inevitably, the Lord himself will increase his influence so he would have significance he would have acceptance are you seeing now when you buy a car why do you rejoice i will tell you you are too smart to rejoice over a metal it is not the metal that is giving you joy you think it is the car that is giving you joy that car is spelling something to your psychology significance that car may make a group now finally accept you what you are really looking for is not a car. I bring you an interpretation so that we'll find rest from this endless mundane pursuit. Most people don't know what they are looking for. Remember, what seekest thou? Because the professor finds out that he's still frustrated like the one who just has SSC. The married man is still frustrated as the unmarried man. The barren woman is still frustrated as the person with eight children. The billionaire is still frustrated as the one whose business has died. So what are you really looking for? Nigeria lost at the stadium. Now I'm not, I'm not a footballer, I'm a patriotic citizen. Why did people get angry? People cried like they lost loved ones. What did they really lose? Yes, thank God for all of the names. But to you, what hurt you so bad that you lost your appetite? Was it really the ball? Do you like a round object that much? No. You were hoping that that result will help to give you a little dopamine feeling that you are in an environment that works. And since it did not happen, it reinforced again the fact that you might truly be a failure. When people are getting married, why do they cry that they don't have money? Is money a condition really for marriage? Everything is in place. No cake, no suit, and they are crying. The priest is there. Your parents are there. Why are you really crying? I will tell you. Because that is a moment in a lifetime where you can rob off your significance and force anybody who has looked down on you to know that this is a day that is exclusively to me. And now finances wants to bust your tire. And you are angry and say, no, the devil is a liar. It will lead you to pray. It will lead you to fast. No. If you receive a transfer of 100 million naira. Now, listen, listen. Say amen. Why did you say amen? Listen. 
if I had said, if you sow a seed of one million naira, you will not fight me because sowing is spiritual, but you will not say amen for that kind of prayer, especially if you know you really have that kind of money. Lest God turns it into a, an instruction and says you should give that money true, true. Now, but I said you would receive a hundred million naira. Now, watch this. Let's examine it. What is a hundred million naira? A figure written online that you can read or a piece of paper no they represent something that seem to draw a line through this psychological needs from security to variety to acceptance are we together to significance that is why you really want the money when you get a good job why do you suddenly the person you were saying yes sir you don't feel a need to say yes sir again and you are not afraid what changed We use different terminologies in our world. Level has changed. You are, um, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. You know it, but I'm telling you that, listen, that's what you are looking for. Why are you angry when people forget your birthday? Did they kill you? Did they blackmail you? So why are you angry? over something that happens in just 24 hours why do you take it personal that after 10 years you are still angry and you transfer that anger to the children this thing is very serious because there are many of us who they gave birth to us in the midst of two people's heads being joined together you don't even know the story you just know that you arrived and met fire from both sides what is the cause of this hatred between my fam father or my family or, and you don't know and trace all of that trouble it is one of these six things i will never forgive you till jesus comes what you are trying to say is you did something that gave me a perception that was against my desire for any of these six things now when you look at me and you say apostle you are a good man i like you what are you saying you are saying either through your life or through your teachings you have been able to help me achieve this goal of being and feeling secured creating a variety in my life sometimes i'm preaching and i'm very serious and yet you laugh why are you laughing that one minute of variety adds spice to the thing while i'm still serious and shouting here you are laughing because you are enjoying what i'm saying The worship team they come and stand here and it is true that they are singing a song about jesus salvation the cross and still they will have to package that song using variety if they sang what they sang week before last next week by the other week they are singing it even them they'll know it's not blessing you again even if the whole song is jesus jesus lamb of god you died for me it will still not bless you because there was no variety in it why do you invite so many music ministers when it's the same person they are all talking about you want them to talk about that person in as many ways biologists and nutritionists will tell us that this food has vitamin C, this one has vitamin C, and yet all your body needs is vitamin C. But you will want to carry the various forms of it. You will not eat orange alone all the days of your life. And you want to add something else, even though what your body needs is just the vitamin C, for instance. You will still want it to come in another expression. Listen to me. Let me repeat something I said. That nothing physical and nothing material in itself can and will ever give you fulfillment. I, I assure you on this. It is the reason why we seem to make it and yet become frustrated. You would think a man of God having a large membership 
and having the power and the anointing of God and a great grace for revelation should never have any concern in his life again. Unfortunately, that is not so. You will think a billionaire and a millionaire should never have any concern in his life again. Unfortunately, that is not so. What seekers thou? Please look at me. My brother, it is not a car you are looking for. Give yourself rest. It is not twins or triplets you are looking for. Give yourself rest. It is not another job you are really looking for. Give yourself rest. I can tell you what you are looking for is a craving for security. What you are looking for is a craving for dynamism and variety. What you are looking for is a craving for significance and acknowledgement. What you are looking for is a craving for acceptance and love. What you are looking for is a craving for growth and increase and advancement. What you are looking for is an honest opportunity for your life to at least count. Write this down. All physical things that we seek, all physical things that we seek are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing. I'll take it again. All physical things that we seek are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing. Through that car, you hope to find something else. Through that marriage, you hope to find something else. Through the increase, you hope to find something else. Through the anointing, you hope to find something else. Through the political position, you hope to find something else. Do you know why I'm helping you? I'm helping you with this teaching so that as you seek to have physical things around you, you will have it at the back of your mind that nothing in itself that I have or ever have will give me what I'm truly looking for. So you can enjoy the physical blessings by having this knowledge that if it is fulfillment I am looking for, these are not the things that will give it to me. That way you can become wealthy and wise. You can become exceptional and wise. Why? Your wisdom comes in knowing that none of these things in themselves can give me fulfillment. Then you start looking for what will really give you security in a deeper way. What will really give you variety in a deeper way? What will really give you acceptance in a deeper way? Look up, please. Can I tell you this? If you don't answer this question and trust God to help you, as a husband, you will find yourself beating your wife every day. And if they ask you, why are you really beating this woman? You will say she does not cook well. If they probe you, you too will say, honestly, I don't know why. I will tell you, you are, you are hurting somebody because of something you are looking for. And because that is the obvious scapegoat around you, you will land it on the person using the guise of any story. Same thing with wife. You can turn and say, my husband is not responsible. And then after you cry and you are done, they say, what are you really looking for? And you say, I don't know. I can tell you what you are looking for. You are looking for what money cannot be. You are looking for what marriage cannot be. You are looking for what employment cannot give. You are looking for what entrepreneurship cannot give. You are looking for what a designer cannot give. You are looking for what travels across the globe cannot give. Genesis 37 and verse 15. Please give it to us. Hmm. And a certain man found you rigmaroling around life and a certain man found you with a pile of enemies on your blacklist and they say well, what is all this about and he said what are you really looking for 
Why do you have enemies everywhere you go? From this company, you have enemies. From that company, you have enemies. Look at the kind of person I am. I don't allow anybody to insult me. What are you really saying? I have a problem, and I'm yet to deal with it. So the obvious is to blame anybody I can blame. Can I tell you, when you have a problem with too many people, the problem is you. Because you interpret life from the lens of your own limitation. When you have a problem in Lagos, Abuja, London, Kaduna, UK, the problem is you. Nothing physical. I remember a story of a man whose car got burned and the man killed himself. I wonder what you will find out where he will find out how foolish he was by killing himself because the car got burned. Now, I don't mean to insult you. Let me tell you why the man killed himself. Because that car burning seemed to have an impact on his mind based on the awareness that my self-worth is tied to this reality. And now that that car has gone, what will my family people think of me? Can I tell you this? If you understand this message I am teaching you, it will bring you permanent deliverance. You will strive to be successful, but you will know that there is something greater than success. So you will not postpone your joy till the day you build a mansion. You will start rejoicing today. If they ask you why, you will say, I know that even my 10 years is not what will give me joy and fulfillment. No. The narrative that most people have, and I say this respectfully, the narrative that most people have, especially in Africa, unfortunately, is a narrative that has been sold by social media, is that the moment you have money, remember the one million thing I said, God bless you, and you shouted amen. The moment you have money, especially lots of it, your respect, your esteem, everything, you have photos of people which all kinds of priority vehicles there around wearing designers, the latest this, and there is a craving in you. I must get it anyhow. Let me give you an advice before time. There was one who already got it before you. Hear what that person said. Vanity upon vanity. Now, you have to understand the person who the Bible says was speaking. The Bible did not call him a businessman. The Bible called him a preacher. He's saying, where you are hoping to get to, I have already gotten there. I can tell you there is nothing there in itself. This is not a call to a life of mediocrity and carelessness. It would challenge you to aspire to get your dreams and your goals. But let me tell you sincerely, as you seek to become all that God has created you to be, I give you an advice because the world of, a, of the great is very deceptive. They arrive there and then they sit and they check to see if that craving has been satisfied. And they find out painfully that like a drug who, that will satisfy you for a short time and you are back to yourself. That's why they get angry. So all my labor of doing this and building that, I thought it would give me that sense of significance. And yet it does not give you anything. What then satisfies these cravings? If a car cannot really do it, if a house cannot really do it, all of those things carry with themselves little expressions. We, we call them feelings. It's a word that we have invented to help us relate with the kind of energy or that, that sense of pleasantness that is derived as a way of checking one of these six lists. Again, I give you a car key. You rejoice because something comes out from that car. A feeling that I am successful. A feeling that I am not a failure. And when that feeling comes, that's it. One day you will be tired of the same car you once rejoiced about. One day you will be tired of the same phone you are now holding and rejoicing about. 
One day you will be tired of the same hair you are wearing now that gave you joy. One day you will be tired. Can you imagine? Remember during the inaugural service here in Koinonia. Remember how we rejoice over this beautiful place. The excellence, the ambience. Now we are tired of it. And we are trusting God to go to another place. I visited Redeemed and I saw the one kilometer by one kilometer that was built. And I thought to myself, what was in Baba's heart when this came? Then they got fed up and tired of it. Then they moved to three kilometer by three kilometer. Our father in the Lord, Bishop David Oedeko, they are building the ark now. Remember, for a long time, he celebrated the 50,000 capacity seater. And one day, that came again. He said, let's go for the ark. I can assure you by the God of heaven, if Christ tarries, except age and other things, but if Christ tarries, usually, and every time he blesses people, he will tell you that there is even a greater one coming. Why am I teaching you this? Because I want you to be both successful and fulfilled. Let's define fulfillment again. That it is the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. I've had the honor and the privilege by the grace of God to be around people who were diagnosed with terminal diseases or people who were, they literally knew that they were on their way going. I've had the honor of praying with them. I've had some healed miraculously. But in all fairness, there are others that I prayed and I knew that probably these people their time was up. And at that time, listen carefully, we have to borrow the mindset of a dying man to understand what fulfillment is about. Once you are not a dying man, you cannot really comprehend the wisdom behind seeking fulfillment. You have to borrow the thinking, the last minute of a man who is alive, who is transiting the earth. There is something about that wisdom you must capture. And that is what will help us tonight. What does a dying man look for? Imagine, don't be afraid, just imagine that God told you right now that by 12 midnight today, okay, you will be afraid of going to heaven, but he's coming. In any case, whether you are going or he's coming, you people must meet because I don't want you to say I'm confessing negatively, you know, believers, some, the way we think sometimes. But realistically, imagine that the Lord told you today that Joshua Selman, by 11.55, you are going home. Question. I know you have investments around the world. <laughs> I know you have all kinds of things. I know you plan to travel next week. I know you even plan to do a lot of things there. There's a TV interview somewhere. But what will become your point of focus with that knowledge? Just one information was passed to you that you have three more hours in this life. And that's it. Three more hours. Wrap up whatever you have to do. You have three hours. No prayer will change it. Three hours. You are not sick, oh, and it's not going to be accident. It will not be anything. Once it's time, God knows the many ways he will pick you so that you don't fear. But you just have three hours. Think for a moment. What are you going to do? Remember your, home, your hometown is more than three hours. So don't even think of running there. Think of something wiser that you will do. Three hours. I'm about to share something else with you and then we'll pray. That's why I'm asking you this question. Do you know, I will tell you this. I can give you an idea of what will happen to you. Hmm. In that moment, I give you a guarantee. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. I'm in the presence 
of my maker. Listen, when you are right there, you may think of your businesses. You may think of your investments. You may think of your certificates. You may think of your wife. You may think of your husband. You may think of your parents. You may think of your children. You may think of your future and your goals, your plans, your house under construction. You may think of the person owing you and the police case that is still pending. You will think of all of these things and yet you will be surprised that none of them at that point will be able to bring you satisfaction. Listen carefully. There is only one thing you will be looking for at that point. When you stand with the consciousness that I have only three hours to live in this life, there is only one thing you will look for. It is called peace. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.